Hello, YouTubies. So, he loves life, invited us to do a challenge to um, encourage awareness of Bell's palsy. Guys, I'm sorry, I don't have an actual eye patch, but I do know that they sometimes use the ones that you um, stick onto your eye. It looks like a plaster. So I'm uh, compromising, since I also wear glasses, which makes it kind of difficult to put on an eye patch over that. But the idea is to encourage awareness of Bell's palsy. Um, I have some knowledge on it because my brother-in-law had it as well and at first we did think he had a stroke. Um, he actually has had two strokes after that but it, it's not related to each other. And the reason why we use the eye patch is because sometimes um, because this, the side of the face, whichever side, is paralyzed and they can't close their eyes. So they need an eye patch to protect the eye, especially at night when they go to sleep. So let's start with the eating. I actually ordered something. It's a sub. It's like a pizza sandwich. <gasps> oh, they made a mess. What is that? It's not supposed to have any sauce in it. Oh, shit, I'm in the car as well. That's the day. Anyway, here we go. So, um, this thing is really now making a terrible mess in here. And it arrived cold. I had to heat it up. Um, so, let's pray first. Things that I, I researched on Bell's palsy. Um, a lot of people right here say that it's caused by stress. I wonder if my camera is streaming up because the whole car is streaming up. Let me just get the windows open. It is not caused by stress as such, but stress does make you more susceptible to it. Because stress compromises your immunity. But from what the doctor told my brother-in-law and also from the research I did, it is caused by a virus that attacks your nerve, a nerve that is behind your ear, that um, provides your, your face. So it swells up, and that's what happens. That's why it gets paralyzed. Oh, I got. Guys, I know you guys eat Carolina Reapers and ghost peppers and all of that. I've only got jalapenos on here, and it's burning up. <laughs> what other illnesses would you guys like to make people aware of? Maybe something that you have that everybody doesn't have a lot of knowledge about. It's kind of difficult to see properly with one eye, especially since <coughs> my eyesight is bad already as it is. I'm kind of scared in the future if I will still qualify for my license because um, my sight, even with my glasses, is very bad. Me personally, I was diagnosed recently with PCOS. I know through some TV shows it, it has become more, people have become more aware of it, but um, it's more co common than people think and it really impacts your life a lot. Mm. This is so good. Anyway, I was only diagnosed recently, but I've had hormone problems my whole life. Um, when I was a young girl, about 19, I just had tremendous pain in my abdomen. And I lost weight and I was just really unhealthy. Doctors initially thought when they tested me for Crohn's disease, but we never got an answer for a long time. Then, when I got married, and I started using contraceptives, no guys, <coughs> I started noticing my stomach got more and more bloated, not really bloated, it, it, it got hard. One morning my husband was rubbing over my stomach and he said, something's up here, are you pregnant? And I said, well, not that enough, because I'm still getting my period. In fact, I was getting very, very heavy periods, with lots and lots of blood clots. Went to the doctors. And she said, well, there's a definite mass there, so I'll have to go and see a specialist. Got there, and the pregnancy test actually did show I'm pregnant. Positive. But when they did the imaging, 
Apparently still a tumor, no baby. They diagnosed it as a fibroid, which they said it got worse. Sorry, when I started using estrogen-based contraceptives. So I had to start using progesterone injections. So they said, sorry, obviously that fibroids are non-malignant and it's unlikely for them to turn malignant, but they can become problematic. So I endured them for three years, after which I was six months pregnant. I was quite thin back then and people were asking me, how far along are you? And um, I went back to the specialist and she said, this thing is growing way too fast. And I was scheduled for emergency surgery the next week. Guys, it was one of the scariest things that have happened in my life and <clears throat> as we go along you will hear that I have had quite a bit of persecutions in my life but having surgery for the first time in my life I was 28 at the time and it being such major surgery because the doctors warned um, I could probably die in the surgery because it was such a huge tumor bleeding was a complication and 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 um, having to have such a major surgery as your first surgery it was quite terrifying They gave me two sleeping pills the night before and it didn't even knock me out. I'm quite light on sedatives. Because the next day when I got my sedative, the before surgery sedative, I was gone by the time I was in the theater. <laughs> anyway, they removed one big tumor. They said it was as big as a six month pregnancy. And because the one was in front was so big, they didn't see there were three more fibroids at the back of my uterus. So, after the surgery, the doctor told me it's not impossible for me to become pregnant. There's a 50 50 chance. But it's incredibly risky. He said they had to cut away, from, uh, cut away some of the womb, making the womb all thin. So chances are my uterus might not be able to carry the child to full term and it might burst, which would cost both of our lives potentially. My husband and I were only married two years back then, so we haven't had the opportunity to even decide if and when we want a family yet. The decision was kind of made for us, so we don't have babies. But we consider all the family and friends who have babies, all of them are babies. Some days it's still sad, especially as my clock is ticking, <laughs> let's put it that way. And you start to realize there isn't the option anymore. But then other days, you know, not having children has its benefits as well. Some people choose it. It's a life choice not to have any babies. So, about, I think, two months after my major surgery, I wasn't fully recuperated yet. And I got some really bad news about my father. That my father had passed away in an accident. <coughs> Guys, I have to tell you, I don't think um, it could have been more difficult than that. But, sorry, I will tell you more about my father and what happened next time. Love you, YouTubers. Let me just take a drink. Love you guys. And um, please do some research on Bell's palsy. And good luck for anybody who has it. And good luck to anybody who knows somebody who has it. You know what we tend to forget, and I learned this the hard way with my mother that was sick, is that we're always paying a lot of attention to the patient, which is good. But we tend to forget the caretakers, which take a lot of strain as well. And I think it's just a good thing to keep them in our prayers and in our minds as well. Okay, guys. Bye.